During the fourth year of his visitation, the Grand Vizier Yusuf stumbled and as a victim of a dangerous intrigue suddenly fell out of favor. The struggle lasted all winter and spring. It was an evil and cold spring which didn't let the summer shine and with the month of May Yusuf emerged from his captivity a victor and the life went on, shiny, peaceful, monotonous. But of those winter months when between life and death and between glory and doom there was no space, not even as much as a knife's blade, something subdued and thoughtful remained within the victorious vizier. The unspoken, what experienced and suffering people keep within themselves as hidden good and what only sometimes unconsciously reflects in their gaze, motion and words. While living as a captive, in solitude and out of favor, the vizier more vividly remembered his origins and his country, for the disappointment and pain guide thoughts into the past. He remembered his father and his mother. They both died while he was a humble assistant to the overseer of the imperial stables, and he gave the order to fringe their graves with stone and white Nishan headstones erected. He remembered Bosnia and the village of Zeppa, from where he was taken when he was only nine. It was pleasant while being in misfortune to think of a distant land and the scattered village of Zeppa, where in every house there is a story of his glory and success in Constantinople, but where no one knows, and not even suspects, the reverse side of glory and the price for which success is attained. That very summer he had the chance to speak with people who had been arriving from Bosnia. He made inquiries and they told him. After the uprisings and wars, there came disorder, scarcity, hunger and all sorts of diseases. He ordered a substantial aid be given to all of his kin, to as many of them as there were left in Zepa, and at the same time he ordered to be ascertained what were the most necessary buildings for them. They informed him that there were still four houses of Shetkic family, that they were the wealthiest in the village, but that the village and the whole area was impoverished, that the mosque was dilapidated and burned, the fountain dried out, but the worst was that they didn't have the bridge on the Zepa. The village was on a hill, near the very confluence of Zepa and Drina, and the only road to Visegrad goes over the Zepa. 50 paces above the confluence. Whatever bridge they had made of logs, the water carried it away, for either the Zepa would swell suddenly and unexpectedly like all mountain streams, then undermine and swept the beams, or the Drina swole, gapped and held Zepa at the confluence, and then she would swell and carry away the bridge, as if it was never there, and in the winter the ice would get caught on the logs and people and cattle would collapse. Whoever built them a bridge there would do them the utmost good.